What's so legendary can I tell you about BMW X6? I guess the same what I can tell you about X5, because they are two absolutely similar cars. We are in St. Petersburg, and we came here to enjoy its rain, horrible winds, loud clouds, our falling drawn, and BMW X6 50D M. I already hate saying M all the time, but unfortunately, it is M. The thing is that there is such a mess in a world of crossovers that all this amount of cars and brands we have on the market today is simply impossible to embrace and it's impossible to test them all. It's an endless conveyor. And all these crossovers are actually the same, no matter what it is. BMW, Mercedes, Audi and all the other brands try to do the same automobile. All of them do the same thing again and again. And as an outcome, it becomes very hard to pick a solid all-in-one car for yourself. So how must BMW X6 survive on this market? And more of that, how can it be profitable to the brand? Why this car exists for? It is a car for an ordinary permanent transportation from point A to point B. What do we have inside here? It's a 3-liter straight 6 with perfect torque at about 700. And we have four turbines. The accelerating of all these engines is wonderful from 0 to 60, but then it starts to deflate. Despite all its thrust and torque, still it weakens, and you easily feel it. And I felt no difference between X7 and X6. And it's strange, because X6 seems to have much less weight, and it must be faster, but there's nothing of that kind. We have very comfortable, nice interior. This configuration is very good. We've got an automotive HUD, massage seats and a seat ventilation. It has absolutely everything, but why I still don't like X6? It is the visibility. The rear window is just a small, miserable embrasure, and I don't see a shit in it. I never like that in cars. I would like to have more space there to see what's going on from the outside. That's why I'd prefer X5. I like it much more. I don't have any technical clarity to this car, because it has a perfect engine, a very fast transmission and incredibly fast electronic devices that reacts immediately to any of your requests and your safety. In the matter of safety, BMW is always a couple of steps ahead. The next system I would recommend you to turn off, if you want to drive fast. Just wait a minute. We are now standing in a jam, but we're gonna move in a moment or two. This system can detect the line of the traffic before you. We can set the speed we need. And here we go. This girl takes all the control and moves by itself. I'm not doing anything now. I'm not steering and not helping it anyway. And it's very useful in jams. You just need to give it some of your control. Here it accelerates. Okay, well, it doesn't see any pits. But it sees the car before you, and I'm not helping it anyway. As soon as I take the steering, I will. Wait a minute. Check this out. What will it do now? I did that, not the car. I saved the day. And what if I switch a turn signal and steer it left a little bit? What you gonna do? So, I want to tell you that it was just going to run into the curb. I want to use all these gifts of humanity so much, but, unfortunately, it doesn't work for our country. I cannot trust this thing yet, because it's still unfinished, and I wait more from it.
this test drive simply cannot be very long, because I already reviewed an X5, and this is an X6, and there is nothing special to tell about it, except the design of this car. Same interior, same engine, same gears and same transmission, and all the same functions within these two cars. It's just the other outlook. Shame of me to review a dirty car for you, but we are in Petersburg, and here it's impossible to wash your car, get to the shutting location, and stay clean. So, sorry guys, but you're gonna watch this dirty girl being tested. God damn it, there is no free car wash around here. Have you booked a time? No, I have fucking not. Who the hell are you? A goddamn president? The side scoops are nothing more than a fake, blind decoration. It's just pimp your ride. That's what your M package is. And nothing more. There is no functional use of this thing, same as there is no any practical use of this spoiler and this fin on the roof. Yes, maybe it's cute, but you must understand, all these things don't do your car any faster. Every new model usually gets its own unique feature. Here they made an Austral's backlight. All I can say about this thing it definitely don't make no wow effect on me. Same as there's no air yeah feeling. How else you want me to comment on this? Does it still shine while the car is covered with shit? Yes, it does. So, as I showed this test in your city. Yeah, it is my city. Well, I need your professional opinion about this car. Do you have it? What, about X6? Yeah. Well, these cars are very similar. Has it ever happened when you shoot a new BMW or picture it for Instagram and people begin to argue in comments what model that is? Nope. My audience is educated. Um, okay, well done, nice move. But in fact, that happens pretty often. When I talked with guys from BMW marketing department, by the way, they are cool and honest fellows, they told me that, yes, we intentionally do very similar cars, but for different prices, because the only thing the buyer wants is the brand. No matter how much he can spend, 30,000 bucks or 60 or more, he wants to get a BMW. That's what they are trying to do, and that's why all of their cars look the same. I'm against this strategy, because when you buy a new car, what do you expect? You want some new features, and when you get to X6 after X5, you think, what should I tell about it? And that's an honest thought. Yes, I simply do not understand what's new about it, except the design. And that's a disappointment, because people are waiting for some new cool thing. And what do they get? Well, the only thing I found are these shiny nostrils. You see, I guess recently they just made such a lip that in one year or a year and a half they have presented us just bend your fingers, an A, an X3, an X4, both of them got M package, X5, X6, the rest style of 7. Can you imagine all that? And an X7, how many products they spit it out in a year and a half, that's amazingly fast. And also a Z4, and also a Supra, well, yeah. I mean, that's a crazy amount of cars. I think we just need to get out of this BMW and get in another one to find some new approach. No, seriously, can you imagine? That's gonna sound funny now, but still I wanna say it. Can you imagine yourself having two BMWs? Well, you had those two old BMWs, right? And now you are buying two more, the new generation BMWs. Can you imagine that? Well, yes, an X7 and M8. Well, I didn't mean that different, but anyway, X7 is out of the row within BMW line. Frankly speaking, I underestimated X7 in my review. I only then understood this car, when we drove 7000 miles to Vladivostok. Well, that was your honeymoon, so you had time to get closer. Yes, it was impressive. But I expected it to be a crossover of a 7. Door closers, check. That's luxury. Now we touch here and there's a light. We've got a full package here and we've got massage seats. For X6, which is kind of X5, and this is not the 7 series, they didn't do it before in these cars. Another luxury thing. Also, we have a super crystal gear shifter. It came from Supreme BMWs. Once again, a luxury. Wireless charger. Good job. And it's not inside of the armrest, like Audi do. Here it's more comfortable. Well, my Rolls Royce has it in armrest. I mean... Well, I'm sorry for you. Well, in Rolls you have this time to open an armrest. Yes, sure, whatever you say.
Anyway, you see, here you have it all. Here we are in all this luxury, and it's all leather and carbon, stitching and nice lines. Everything's so shiny, but still I have nothing to tell about it. And still you are loyal to BMW, admit it. I love this brand, and you see here I touch it and I love it, but... You know I'm a fan of Range Rovers, right? And when I will make a review for a Range Rover, this time I'm gonna invite you. I just need someone like you to destroy it. Not a problem, I will do that for you. I have a special fame within Range Rover departments. They love me, like, a lot. Once, about a half year ago, I called to Range Rover department and asked for a car to shot a review. And you know what they say? What? They said, all our cars for facts are broken. <laughs> so why you left BMW behind? Why? I never left it. I want an M8. Ah, uh, good choice. And it has no competitors, actually. And here's another thing. All our colleagues also drive BMWs, Balkan drives M5 and Edward too. God damn, you are right, Eric, and I'm sick of that already. They all buy BMWs, what's wrong with this world? But what else would you buy? Audi has failed, they didn't do anything cool. And no RS6, and there's nothing new Mercedes can provide. Because they don't have anything, they have no engine for our market. All good things they do, they sell only in Europe, but not here. And that's kind of frustrating, because Audi and Volkswagen and all the Volkswagen group. They're supposed to beat everyone, but they seem like left Audi behind for Russia. Cause we have Skoda for this market. By the way, do you know who have sold more diesel engines of all brands? I mean, absolute winner here in Russia. Nope. Is it Skoda? It's BMW. Wow, that's impressive. Dude, they overrun Volkswagen. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I do not race anymore, I quit it. I've bought a vegetable car, 7 seconds to 60, just not to provoke myself. But I said in this car and here we go. And that's kind of their thing, they make cars with such a character. Yeah, well, hear what I think. You just have to look at these nostrils, or to feel the smell of this particular leather, or not leather, whatever to see its main features, and at this moment, somewhere inside of you, this thing wakes up. <laughs> 360 camera. I use it. And do we have it here, this 3D thing? Let's try to find it. I feel like I press the same button, but every time it takes me to a different menu. What the hell? Yeah, because you're entering a sub-menu. You have to go to the settings. Okay, here you have a parking assistant, and here's the camera view, and... Damn it, man, we're searching for it like 10 hours already. No, what did you press? We've been on the right way. I press left all the time. Damn, it have to be much easier. Maybe you had to press it twice? Or maybe I have to hold it? <laughs> 2000 years later. Fuck. Relax, we have the whole life ahead. We'll figure it out. Why did you have to press it? Later we'll make another video. How to find a 3D parking in XX. Come on, you motherfucker, work. Yes, that should help. Dude, that's not such an important thing. I guess I broke it. Then I press here and... Wait. God damn it, I found it. This is it. Did you hold it? No. What did you do? I don't know. You'll watch that on video later. Okay, so this is it. Yes. But how to... Now we're gonna learn for next 10 hours how to use this thing. Well... Well, it's beautiful, but it's useless. I never bought that thing for my car, I have only one rear camera. I have all the stuff, massage seats, perforated leather, and one rear camera. For not to get in this stupid situation, I have no idea how it works, so I don't need it. A perfect strategy for me. But for everyone who wants to buy such a car, not the new one, but maybe an already used XX, I want to say, do it. If sure that you compared it with all the competitor brands. I haven't done it yet, but I'm pretty sure that later we'll have to test a Mercedes GLE to understand which way it differs from BMW. We need to do it to compare these two cars. Audi has nothing to compare, only a Q8, but if you compare it, the Q8 can interest you only because of its design. But as for functions and equipment, well, maybe it's on the same level as X6, but as for the engine, the safety system and fast electronic devices, BMW is far ahead. 
that's for sure. Believe me. <laughs>